What's up, everybody? I'm Hunter. This is Chris. Hi, everybody. With Lost Socket Garage. And today, what we're going to do is talk about what tools you need to prepare yourself to be able to do a coupe to fastback conversion. So let's get started. For many, the 60s and 70s is viewed as the pinnacle in American automotive production, giving us some of the most iconic cars in history. The 80s, not so much. What the 80s did give us is two guys with a passion for bringing these classics back to life. Their goal is to educate, motivate, and most importantly, make the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> Mother Welcome to Lost Socket Garage. So we get a lot of questions about, uh, hey, what, what tools do I need? I want to take on a coupe to fastback conversion. Um, we've done quite a few of them here and we have a pretty good list of, of what we need. So we're going to go ahead and cover that. I would say the number one most important tool that you have or can get is this tool right here. This is my tool. Chris, get a friend because doing this alone <laughs> is a pain in the rear. So yes. doing a, a coupe to fastback conversion on a scale of one to why did I quit my job to start a new automotive business? It's probably like an eight. Yeah, it's probably, I'd say a 15 actually. Yeah, it's it really is complicated. Don't get frustrated though, as long as you take your time. So step one, get a friend. Step two, subscribe to this YouTube channel and we can always walk you through it. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on all of it. Um, and to help support the show, we have merchandise. We just dropped a brand new shirt. I'll let you guys take that in for a second. Do you get it? Do you get it? It's available on our website, lostsocketgarage.com, as well as our Facebook store. And if you purchase a shirt, you're automatically entered to win $500. That's my shameless plug. Let's get straight into the tools. Explaining PPE for the coupe to fastback conversion. Take two. All right. Thanks, Vanna. So the first thing uh, that we're going to talk about today is PPE. Um, personal protection equipment is very, very important. This is a, a difficult undertaking. Um, there's a lot of metal flying everywhere. There's a lot of uh, uh, sparks. There's liquid hot magma. Liquid hot magma. That you'll be dealing with. So the first thing that we're going to do is we'll protect our eyes. Uh, so... Just a good pair of safety goggles. I know we gotta, we have to cover this stuff, but there are some things that you really need to pay attention to. Get a good pair of safety goggles. There are also uh, face shields, which we forgot to put on the table. My lovely assistant is sprinting to get one right now. So when grinding, you'll find that uh, a lot of... Yeah! Face shield. When grinding, I'll tell you the difference. Uh, you'll find a lot of times that sparks will actually go around these. Um, so I always wear these unless I'm actually grinding down welds or, uh, you know, cutting away metal. This full face shield is awesome. Um, protect your head with one of those welding bandanas too because it can singe your hair. So. Huh. Ice. Hands, a couple of different pairs of gloves you should have. Uh, these, I think we got them in like IFA or something like that. These are good leather gloves that you can't light on fire. Uh, welding gloves, you can also use your welding gloves for grinding. Uh, they're a little bit thicker though, so sometimes uh, actually maneuvering stuff is a little bit more difficult. And as a bonus, aside from like the basics, like a welding helmet that's going to go with the welder that Chris is going to show you here in a second, uh, these welding sleeves are an awesome pickup as well. Um, so slag doesn't hit you or, you know, all the sparks, all the stuff that you're grinding down or grinding off doesn't hit you. Next, let's get into prepping your car for the conversion. So that she doesn't get overwhelmed. We're rolling. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about preparing your car for this huge, huge job. First of all, you want to make sure that she knows that you love her still, because even though you're doing a lot of body work, you're still going to love her, because that's important. So anyway, after you get done that and saying goodbyes to the coop, 
what we need to do is we need to prep it with some things. First of all, you need three different levels that are different lengths. So you got a small one, long one, and one that's about this high. And why you might ask? So that you know that your car is level when we put it up on screw jacks. Screw jacks are important because you can actually level it as it's on there. Whether you need to make it go this way or that way or front to back or lower the back or front and everything like that. Very important. We typically have four on each side, two in the rear and two in the front. That's what she said. <laughs> so you can make sure your car is level before you put in your your framing to keep it from twisting. Next, after you get it all squared away, you need to get some tubing. This is one by one eighth of an inch tubing. We buy it in I think about five foot sections. Take about four or five of them to build your inner structure and then you weld that in there so that your car doesn't essentially fold in on itself or twist. We want to keep this as straight as possible so when you're going back together you don't have any issues with measurements because there's already tolerances that you're going to be fighting anyway. Next up, we're going to go through the hand tools that you're going to need. Hand tools by Hunter Smith. Take one. Can I have that please? <laughs> Hi. Um, let's talk about the hand tools you need. Uh, clamps, clamps, clamps. You're going to clean out your local Harbor Freight. Uh, covering clamps. These are going to be used to actually hold the new sheet metal on. Uh, push body panels together, get your gaps correct, etc. So you really do need a variety. Um, most all of these, I think one set we got off like Amazon, but you can find most of these at, at Harbor Freight. Uh, you got these little guys. These are actually awesome. They have a lot of torque to them. If you get them smaller than this, they're a real pain once you actually torque down on a panel. It's a pain to get them back off. So this is really the smallest uh, size clamp you want to go with. Uh, this C-clamp is actually one of my personal favorites. This is a six-inch C-clamp. Again, we got this at Harbor Freight. This gets into a lot of areas where uh, these flat clamps can't. So these are awesome. Get these. Uh, a large clamp is always good. We use these uh, not a terrible amount of times, but sometimes we use it for like the roof and stuff like that. And then the big mama. <laughs> these I never thought we would actually use this size of clamp until Chris bought them and then we started using them all the time these are great because you can actually get into like the uh, inner structure of the the car and clamp everything together clamp the skin to the inner structure etc so having like a set like two of these hanging around uh, you'll thank me later clamps are a very very big deal get a lot of them you're probably going to use I would say a safe number would be like 15 to 20 clamps um, around that area of various sizes. Uh, now, when you actually hold body panels on, dude. <laughs> That's actually a tool you can use. So you can get it. It's already broken. The handle's broken. Uh, so, moving on. When you're actually attaching panels, when you're mocking up the inner structure you're going to be taking stuff on and off over and over and over and over again we probably assemble and disassemble a car uh, probably six times before we actually do a final weld of everything to hold these panels on there are a couple of ways that you can do it a is with uh self-tapping screws probably get uh i would say half inch to three quarters inch these are an inch we found these to be a little bit too long um she never said that. <laughs> Self-tappers are great. Another thing that we discovered, not discovered, we didn't, you know, we're not Columbus of Clicos, but Clicos. We do love Clicos here because they're wonderful for the inner structure as well as putting the outer skin on the car. Clicos, they'll come with a wrench. You can get these off Amazon. They're like 70 bucks for, you know, 70 to 100 pieces. It'll come with a little wrench. These Clicos are awesome for any metal work that you do. I think we could get sponsored by Clico. That would be cool. Is Clico like Kleenex, where it's the name brand Clico, but all of the, the other ones that make Clicos are... I don't know if there's another brand. I think they're the only ones. Moving right along. 
Markers. <laughs> Our shop gnomes take these all the time. Get black as well as silver because the various panels will actually come. So if you're getting them unwelded, they're going to come in black. And if you're get, getting them with the uh, weld through primer on them, they're gray. So get black, gray, and white. White's nice. Another tool that you're going to need uh, is a measuring tape. Not to have measuring competitions, but you're going to need to be measuring your uh, door gaps, uh, the distance between the A pillar and B pillar, your back window, uh, trunk, width, length, etc. of all these things. So definitely have a measuring tape handy. Uh, hammers. <sighs> Ball peen hammer. This is awesome. This thing you're going to use so much. And it's little brother, believe it or not. You're going to use this a lot around like the tail panel and uh, just kind of moving panels around a little bit, little uh, tabs on panels, etc. This is a six inch hammer, and this is something we got off the Cornwell truck. Great hammer. Uh, to go along with it, jump on Amazon. That's where I get these. And this is a pinch, uh, a yeah, a spot weld remover. And I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it is sharp on one end and on the sides so that once you drill out a spot weld, you can put this in here and hammer it down on this end and it'll break the panel free. So this thing is a must have. I freaking love this thing. Uh, next up, let's talk about power tools. All right, so power tools that are a necessity are very few things. Unlike the hand tools, there's not as many of these, but one that will be your best friend is a Sawzall. This has helped you remove the, the roof in a couple minutes and quarter panels. But to do the quarter panels, we like to use these grinders with cutoff wheels. That'll take off quarter panels so much faster than taking a Sawzall because a Sawzall, as it cuts, will seriously vibrate that quarter panel and you'll just get so annoyed. So we have a couple different things we use on the grinders. We have the cutoff wheels. Ours is set up for a four and a half inch diameter wheel. Uh, grinding wheels. We also like those. When you weld, you get to grind off the, gr the welds. And also sanding discs. This will make it so smooth after you're done grinding that you won't even know that the weld is there. So those three things are a must have when you're doing one of these. Also, you don't have to have multiple drills, but having multiple really does help because then you're not changing out bits from spot weld cutters to the drill bits to the screwdriver. It just helps having various drills that you need. We like the Milwaukee's electric so you don't have a bunch of cords going everywhere from the plug-in ones because you will, as we said, you're going to be drilling, you're going to be cutting out spot welds, you're going to be screwing in self-tappers or however you want to secure your panels. So some of these bits, like we were talking about, like the spot weld cutter, it's actually, we get these off Amazon and they actually come in a pack of, I don't know, 10 or 12 of them. And it comes with a dowel with the, uh, the lining pin. And those pins you can actually re replace because it comes with a set of about three and then a bunch of double-sided cutters. So you should be able to do a whole car with one of these kits. I think they're like 22 bucks on Amazon. And they go through and they cut out the spot welds and they do an awesome job. Another thing, if you're going to use Clecos, 316, yep, 316th drill bit, because that's the size of Clecos we have. There's also an eighth of an inch Cleco if you get, but we like the bigger ones because they have a little more rigidity and we don't have to worry about things flexing as much. So 316th or, or an eighth of an inch, whichever size Clecos you have. But the size for the spot weld cutter for the guide pin is 330 seconds. If you use, what was it, that we use like 564 or something like that, it was slightly too small and the guide pin didn't go through. So 330 seconds is what you're gonna need for that for the spot weld cutters. Other than that, well, saws all blades, clearly. Sometimes if we're cutting off the roof, we'll get the 12 inch ones because then it'll go right through the sail panel really, really easy with the whole frame and everything. So you can have some various lengths on that too. So this is an impact punch. Now you wonder why it's called an impact punch? Because literally it impact punches. <laughs> it's spring loaded. So before you run your drill bits, it actually punches a little indent. So your 
because sometimes your drill bit will want to walk. So what you actually do, do you hear that click? <laughs> it actually puts a little indent so that your drill bit doesn't punch or doesn't walk. You get that at Harbor Freight too, they're really cheap. We have a few of those and they're actually really, really awesome. Also, once you get done and to this stage, we've actually welded a good majority of this one together today. You're gonna need a welder because you can't hold one of these with screws and hopes and dreams because it will get nasty real quick. So you're gonna need to get a good helmet. These are auto darkening. We love it. We actually modified this to put a light on top of it, which is actually pretty cool when you can't see stuff. We get a little creative here. You're gonna need a MIG welder. Gotta have a good set of welding gloves. And as Hunter said before, these arm shields, if you don't have a coat, is awesome. They save your arms so much. And also, if you want to go cooking, <laughs> you can have a little apron. So you can cook, have a little barbecue while you're doing this, you know, on the side of your house. <laughs> Just kidding. This will actually help um, sparks not go through your pants. And it's happened to me, and it's not a very fun experience. Sucks. It hurts really bad. So, get one of these. All the majority of this stuff we got at Harbor Freight, minus Milwaukee, stuff like that. But you can get the majority of this at Harbor Freight. We're not sponsored by Harbor Freight. Maybe we can get a sponsorship. That'd be cool. That would be so cool. So now we're going to go into optional equipment that may or may not help your conversion process because sometimes it actually is a combination of these things that actually makes it go faster. I want to give you a couple of uh, tools that, if you have the money, um, have been pretty helpful for us. Now, most of the welds on the fastback conversions are going to be plug weld. That's basically what we do. There are a lot of the panels that you actually can uh, spot weld, though. Um, so, grabbing a spot welder. These things are freaking heavy. That's why we kind of switched over to, to mainly just plug welding, and you have to weld and then let it cool down, etc. But for things like the roof, uh, and where the, the roof meets the windshield, etc. Those areas, these are nice for uh, some of the inner structure. If you watch our other video on how to save money on a Dynacorn kit, uh, you can actually use this spot welder to put together all the pieces to the Dynacorn uh, Fastback Coop to Conversion Kit. Yeah. And then another thing we just recently got, and we actually started on these conversions, is a plasma cutter it's actually pretty dope so we just got this off amazon it's a jegs jegs cut 40 and then a bunch of replaceables or what do they call them consumables consumables i almost said edibles <laughs> <laughs> that will make your conversion go much slower so anyway using this with the sawzall you will be able to have your car cut down in a matter of hours. I think we had these two cut down to the same place in about four hours doing that. It substantially sped things up because I think the last time we did it with just a sawzall and cutting blades, it took basically the whole day. Yeah, and the plasma cutter is a great thing, but it is kind of, it's not a necessity, but it's definitely a, a bonus if you can or do have one of those. Um, so these are just a, a few of the tools. Now, if you're doing, if you're replacing the floor uh, if you're replacing any metal panels in your car, uh, you know, a lot of these tools are going to be super, super applicable. These are just a few of the tools, most of the tools actually, that we found uh, work the best using uh, or doing these conversions. Well, I hope that everyone found this helpful, at least to get you going on the right foot on, on doing a conversion. Keep following along. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tips and tricks and uh, to see some of our conversion uh, progress on a lot of the cars that we have. Follow us on Facebook. We have an Instagram that we're always doing stupid stuff on. Uh, check out our shop. We have Lost Socket Garage t-shirts as well as some other cool stuff. Every $5 you spend gets you one entry uh, to win 500 bucks. So get on that. That's a limited time thing. Um, keep following along. You know, we appreciate you watching. This is a very, very difficult undertaking, so if you are going to do a coupe to fastback conversion, take your time, do your research, reach out to people who have done these before. There's a lot of really, really good resources out there. 
Uh, shout out to uh, one of the other channels we, we do a lot of work with, Scott Harness. Check out some of his videos. He's done a lot of uh, good videos on prepping to do a coupe to fastback conversion, etc. Until next time, do what you love, be happy, and above all, have fun doing it because that's the goal. Have fun, kids. Peace. Bye-bye.